Welcome to Fresh Picked, a youth-based radio program that brings the voices and perspectives of artists to your ears. I'm Ashley Overbeek, and today we'll be meeting Greg LeBon, who uses his unique skills as a practicing architect to elevate the art of sand sculpting to another dimension. It's sculpture and sand is the medium. We create virtually anything and everything in sand. Ever since he was four years old and chose to build sand castles at the beach while others were playing in the water, Greg knew he had a passion for sculpting. But what he didn't realize was that his passion was marketable. I love sand sculpture. I did it for many years, never thinking that I would make a dollar doing it. Never crossed my mind. And after a while, I realized I could. Greg founded Arcasand, a team of sand sculptors, in 1989. When it comes to sand sculpting competitions, his group is unrivaled, boasting victories at the U.S. Open of Sand Sculpting, being featured on the Travel Channel Sand Blasters Sand Sculpting Competition, and even donating a sculpture to Ty Pennington's Extreme Home Makeover. I'm an architect. I'm a practicing architect, a real estate developer. Many of the team members on our team are practicing architects. And basically, our team name is derived from architects in sand arc a sand. So it's kind of, um, it, we're bringing sand and architecture together to create wonderful creations of art and architecture and sand. We've been doing it over 30 years. Constructing castles, cars, and miniature landscapes with precise details carved from sand must take an army of tools, and definitely some super glue, right? Surprisingly, Greg's go-to masterpiece creating tools are quite humble. I probably have a hundred different tools, but I go to five tools for 90% of the work we do. Um, you know, the shovel, the large, medium, and small trowels, and a bucket of water. Although both sand sculpting and architecture share the same core of skills and ideas, the nature of sand itself allows for some truly beautiful and effervescent creations. I like sand sculpture for the fact that you can realize these sand sculptures in a day or two sometimes just a few hours. Uh, my life is a practicing architect. Um, our, our major buildings take years to realize. They take years to plan and design. They take years to, to budget and get approved and years to build. Um, some of our major hotels, um, literally six, seven years from, ah, oh, I think we're gonna do this to the day we open. Um, when we create sand sculptures, we can we can create joy and, and pleasure for the public and we can do it within a day. It's really great. Though sand allows for the realization of creative blueprints in less than a day, it brings the adjunct realization that its presence is fleeting before returning to nature. As Greg has learned, disasters and cave-ins do occur in the world of sand sculpting, but the spirit to persevere is the solid force that always holds his team together. I think the most challenging thing with sand is is that it is a fragile medium um, and it's so temporary. Uh, we've had such beautiful pieces that collapse. Um, um, understanding your sand, knowing how to soak it, pack it, and carve it is, is really so important. We've had uh, sculptures fall, we've had parts of sculptures fall. Um, recently, we had part of a fender fall off of an Audi race car, and um, I was ready to throw in the towel and say, well, it's the way it goes. Um, but we had teammates on that, on that particular project with me that said, no, we can fix it, we can rebuild it. And by God, we did just in time delivery. Um, you know, we hand packed that sand right back up, and next thing you know, we had ourselves a fender again. Sand sculpting doesn't just exist on the beach anymore. Greg recalls one of his favorite creations that existed in a very unexpected place. We dropped 25 tons of sand outside the Staples Center at LA Live for the Kings hockey team, the LA Kings. Just this last year, they were the Stanley Cup champions and we created the Stanley Cup in sand, um, probably 11, 12 feet tall. Um, we put the players' jerseys in this piece, and the Kings fans 
by the thousands came back week after week for seven weeks and hung out around the sand sculpture. As, and we changed it up probably three, four different times. So where does all the sand come from and where does it go when it's done? Greg realizes the sustainable life cycle that his sculptures progress in, creating an art form that is uniquely renewable. Um, sand sculpture is one of the most green art forms that I can think of. Um, we borrow sand from nature for a brief period of time. We create wonderful, great art. We capture it with photography. And then nature takes the sand back um, for us to come back another day and borrow sand from nature and create wonderful art and joy. Um, I can't think of any other art form that's so 100% uh, green. If you paint a painting, it's on a canvas. You've used the canvas, you've used the paint. Um, you know, this art form is truly 100% recyclable. We're using the same sand we've used over 60 times for the sculpture at the Hilton today. And uh, we'll probably use it another 60 times before we really just say back to nature. As Greg has learned, watching your artwork disappear into a mound of sand is tough, but it teaches us an important life lesson, that nothing is permanent. Life is beautiful yet fleeting, and the destruction of the sand sculptures is just another dynamic aspect of its cycle. And then slowly they erode, slowly nature takes its course, and then eventually they start to fall apart and someone will wreck it. Um, but that's uh, the cycle of life. It's like Lion King in, in miniature. It's really... Um, it, it's really interesting and um, unique and amazing. It's so surreal to see some of these sculptures uh, just come alive and, and to, to know it's just sand. It's, it's really pretty, pretty uh, rewarding. It's exploration. Art is exploration.